Hey everyone, welcome to DIY Declassified. I want you to say goodbye to that fear and that anxiety that comes with tackling your everyday DIY projects because here, I'm gonna show you how to conquer them all. In this episode, we are going to be laying our composite decking to include how I'm hiding the fasteners and how I am taking the fascia boards up a notch by adding a little more detail to our deck. So far in this series, you've seen how we've started with the plan, how we put the first hole in the ground and installed our pillars, how we mounted our deck to those pillars, how we framed the deck and installed our beams, how we measured, framed, and cut our stringers for our stairs. And now we are finally installing our decking. So what happens, each board, it warps a little differently. The, the, the bow ends up going into different spots. And so what ends up happening is you'll look down the deck and remember this is you know i'm i'm six two and so if the deck is right here anybody that's walking up to the side of it they'll be able to see right down it and if you've got bows in the wrong areas it'll end up looking like waves going across your deck when you look down the tracks i'm, I'm telling you that composite decking it'll form to any any type of bend and bow that you have in your deck so you got to make sure that you get those things squared away on here you can see the level and stuff you can see that um, it's not really tilting back and forth. They're all relatively touching each beam. No big deal, right? And I come out here and push myself a little ways away. You can see on that end, there's quite a gap. So the amateur that I am, I didn't replace the batteries in time. Um, camera went dead as I was planing down those beams. Sorry. So to give you guys kind of a quick rundown, what I ended up doing is I went to Harbor Freight and got this. It's not really that expensive. Chicago Electric, cheap little planer. It did the job just fine. Um, so what I did is I went through the, the deck after the framing was done and I ran just a four foot level across it. Now, whenever the level hit a beam, I knew that that beam just had to be knocked down just a little bit so that it slid even across. What I ended up doing, I just set my planer down to a very low setting and I just knocked off a little bit at a time. It only took an hour to get all that stuff taken care of, but I'll tell you, um, just that little bit of time will save the entire look of the deck. The last step in the process before finally laying down your decking is laying down a layer of butyl tape. Now, some research has shown that around 90% of deck framing starts to split and rot around eight to 10 years. But if you use composite decking, they're usually warranted around 25 years. Basically, your decking will outlive your frame. Adding butyl tape can help extend the life of your wood frame by doing a couple simple things. This stuff acts as a water barrier between the frame and the decking material. So if you have water trap between the decking and the framing, it can't soak in and rot out the beams. Additionally, when you put screws into the beams, it opens the wood for further water and rot. The butyl tape will seal around your screw to prevent water from getting through. It's a simple addition that can add years to the life of your deck. Now that we've got all the butyl tape on there, um, we're gonna start throwing down our decking. Um, because we're doing a picture frame deck, we, we've got two different colors. We've got this, this uh, espresso, which kind of has a gray brown tone to it. And then this gray color right here. Um, this is going to be with that picture frame on the outside, and then this is what's gonna be making up the inside. So when we're doing this picture framing, you gotta make sure that, that that board that's on the edge is meant for an edge. When you go to purchase your composite decking, it's gonna come two different ways. One way is it's gonna have this groove right here on the side, and then the other way is it's gonna have a clean side. So my fascia board is three quarters of an inch thick and I want a board to overhang that as well. So when I go to do my overhang, I gotta take into consideration the three quarters of an inch thickness on my fascia board and then however much further past that I have to add on to it. What I'm doing is we're actually just drilling in our first board. Um, so when we do this, you gotta remember that this piece right here is what's gonna be framing around the outside and notice there's no edge here, okay? Where there is the edge on this, which means I can't use a hidden fastener on the outside of that. These are the hidden fasteners that I will be using when we are doing the regular boards because they fit right into that groove and that's how we can hide them. The problem is, is I don't have a way to do that out here. So there's another option that we have and that's with these plugs. 
Uh, they're hidden screws that just end up going straight in there. And then you take these plugs and you just pop them right into the holes when you're done with them. The plugs are the exact same color as the decking that we have. And so, I mean, if you look close, you could see it kind of, but for the most part, they really do hide them. First thing that we end up doing is we just drill holes. We end up sinking those bolts in and then you can put the plugs in. I'm gonna wait to put the plugs in later in the event that I have to pull them out. After you get your first board in, you can now use the Fiberon Phantom Universal Hidden Deck Fasteners to do the rest. Yes, that's a lot of words. When you lay the boards, don't be too concerned that the edges are all in line and square. Once the boards are all fastened down, we are going to run a saw across them all in a straight line so they all look uniform. Now just get ready for a long day of screwing in hidden fasteners. No, seriously, this takes a lot longer than you think. All right, now that I got the decking laid down for the most part, it's time to get ready to put our picture frame on. Don't worry about measuring each one of these boards specifically and then nailing or screwing it in. Um, the reason is, is because we're gonna go through and we're gonna cut a straight line. Now, when you're getting ready to cut through this, you wanna make sure that your blade is just slightly above the, the bottom of that board. And the reason is, is when you're sawing through, you don't wanna cut this butyl tape that you ended up putting down because um, then it just completely defeats the purpose. And so what I've done, I put the blade right there towards the bottom where there is just about a 16th of space left between the two. I measured across the deck to make sure I had uniform measurements all the way down the deck and then marked a chalk line. This gave me a perfect square to border with the other color boards. I then laid one of the boards along the line to use as a fence for my circular saw. They are pretty flexible, so I did what I could to clamp it down and stop it from moving. So now that we have made our cut all the way down to straighten this guy out, I mean, you could see exactly why we need to do it. Now, you can pretty much break these off and you can see it does a, a pretty clean break. To install the frame around the outside, you lay it down just like you did all the others. The only difference with this install is the 45 degree cut on each edge and that I have to use the Cortex hidden fasteners to secure them. For the landing on the stairs, I'm doing the exact same design. So every step I did on the deck, I just repeat down below. If you want to see how we built these stairs, go ahead and click on the link above for a full tutorial. So what I end up doing is I follow the same line all the way across on all the pieces that I'm actually drilling holes in. That way, if you do end up seeing them, it is a little bit more uniform. So I ended up marking out on my square. Um, I basically just make a little hole notch there just to get it out of the way. And I ended up taping up my drill just so I know. Then you just end up getting your screws, throw those in there. And what's kind of nice is it gives you this bit and it has that little sponge that's at the top. So that way you can't over screw them or over tighten them. Works just like that. Then you end up taking your plugs. Now these plugs, you can see that there's a grain on there. Make sure when you put these in that you're lining up the grain it helps in hiding these a little bit better when you have the grain aligned the same direction. Just take a little rubber mallet, and them in. Next, I install my kicker boards. As luck would have it, my rise was the exact width of these boards, so I had no trimming to do. Once the kicker boards were installed, I moved to installing the treads. All right, so now what I'm basically doing here is I'm cutting in my 45 degree angles. So I take this, cut the 45, put this side in, put that side in, and then I measured corner to corner to get the distance of this one board. So let's work on some fascia. Um, when you have your deck standing on top of it, it can look complete. You got your railing on and all that fun stuff. But when you're in your yard, it could look unfinished, especially when you have it looking like this. 
where it's just the wood front. There's nothing pretty about it. You can order your fascia boards. You can order them pretty long. Um, on my deck, however, they are about a foot short, which means I'm gonna end up with some sort of line. With the expansion and contraction of this composite as it gets hot, um, you're gonna end up with some weird gaps. And so there's a way that I'm going to do to, to hide it. I'm actually gonna put these decorative pieces where the grain goes down in front of every one of these posts. And then what I'm gonna do is just end up putting the fascia in between the two pieces here, okay? I'm running the grain vertically. It would mean that I'd end up with an open grain on one side. So what I ended up doing is I cut a 45 degree edge on both of them. So even from underneath, it looks like a complete piece of wood. All right, so what I ended up doing, um, since I'm doing my fascia board and I'm putting those bricks in there, um, I'm just gonna show you how I make them. Uh, I pretty much just take one of the pieces and I just cut on the table saw a 15 degree edge on one side and a 45 degree edge on the other. I take another piece and I cut a 45 degree edge and then just on the chop saw, cut it down. When connecting the two pieces, you're gonna want that lip to hang out just over the top. Because what's gonna happen, when I drill the holes and I screw through the top, it's gonna cinch that down and it's actually gonna slide it down that board and it's gonna give us a good tight corner. Then the next thing that I end up doing is I put the screw in that I'm using and I'm using these GRK fasteners with that smaller head and I'm gonna end up screwing it in a couple times and you'll see there's a bunch of composite that pushes out. I wanna try and clear as much of that out as I can because what will happen is it'll push it in between these two boards when I go to screw it in and it'll end up separating the board. Well, that does it for this episode. I wanna thank you guys for watching. And if you guys wanna to continue to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. It's completely free to you and it allows us to provide you fresh content uh, more frequently.